Hi, Pamela. Hello. How are you? Pretty good. How are you doing? <laughs> I'm barely standing. I thought <laughs> I would be in a better shape today, but that is not the case. So, well, you're wearing a few too many hats. Yeah. Yeah. So, hi, Pamela. Hello. How are you? I was just uh, saying to Marty that I'm barely standing. I thought I would be in better shape today, but, um, you know, you think you're going to get things accomplished and other plans get in the way. <laughs> yeah. And sometimes you feel like you're struggling in vain and, you know, putting all your time and energy and effort. And then you hear all these criticisms. So it's not easy no no please let us know Pam if there's anything we can do as I told you we can share with the minutes taking minutes and if you cannot find any support that's yeah so, thank you so I had planned um I thought that my timing was going to work out so that I would be able to get the minutes done. And, you know, mm -hmm. I think part of the delay is that if I do them right away, then they go really quickly. It's when there's been some time that passes, that means that they've, uh, that I'm behind. So I actually got quite a few, I, well, I wrote up the vast majority of the September minutes on Friday, but then I got called to do something else. And so I didn't have an opportunity to finish them but um my goal <laughs> um mm -hmm. is to get this set done you know within the week and right now it's looking like the week will have uh some time to do that but you know it's sort of interesting all right i see that there's right. well. <laughs> yeah yeah so okay so so um, Guilford is here, but he doesn't have his camera on yet. So he might be finishing yeah. up um, uh, a comment or so. And and I don't think we have quorum. Uh, no. So um, it seems like no, yeah, yeah. You you don't at the moment. And I did hear. I know that. Um, Ian and uh, Jim are scheduled to be joining us. Um, and in fact, there's Ian. I'm going to bring him over to a uh, panelist. And um, I know that Kate, Cody is not able to join us. So. How about Myra? Myra, if you recall, um, was going to be out of town this oh, uh, oh, for oh, this oh. meeting. And so your co-chair is in charge of the meeting. Okay. All right. And there's, uh, I'm going to just uh, promote uh, Jim to panelists as well. Because okay. I've, so he should be coming over. Okay. So you should be at quorum. Yes. That's everyone. Okay, so that's everyone, and you are at quorum. Um, do you do have one attendee? Marty, do you have the agenda in front of you? No, I don't. Okay. Um, see if I can get it. Okay. This... Uh... Setup is a little difficult. All right, and I will. Um, I'll make an effort to do the same thing because I don't have it in front of me, but I know that I can get to it. Um, and it, so I set up the the Zoom meeting so that you're being re that it, it automatically records. So we are being recorded as we speak. Yeah. And um, and then I just want to ask Ian and uh. And Jim, if you received your email notification, did you receive Zoom invites at all? Not at all? I, I didn't. I, I looked through it um, and I had to email you separately about it. Yeah. 
And Jim, same for you. You did not receive an email. I'm not sure what went wrong. You're you're muted. Jim, you're muted. There we go. Yeah. Um, I do get the notices. It's an odd feature. I don't know if it's a Gmail feature, if it's Gmail on this Android phone. But what happens is that if there's a chain of emails, the earlier emails get swallowed up mm -hmm. uh, and I can't retrieve them. It's the strangest thing. So <laughs> if I'm smart, I'll usually immediately forward my Gmail to my other email address, or at least I have it uncontaminated, but mm -hmm. I do get them. I do okay. get them. Okay, all right. So the, the way that the Zoom um, is set up, you should receive the initial invite and then one day um, in advance, a second reminder, and then one hour, um, um, another reminder. So I'll, you know, I'm not the most tech savvy person, so it could be something on my end, but you should be getting the, those notices and we'll we'll double check. So Marty, and were I, you- I have gotten those in, in previous months, just not for this month. Yeah, I don't know what happened with that. And but that's what I found too. I didn't get, I, I got a, a notice from you, but I certainly didn't get the follow-ups yesterday or an hour ago. Okay, all right. And. Marty, were you able to get the? No, I'm actually not. Um, okay. It appears I don't have the agenda. All right. Okay. Sorry the... about that. Nope, that's all right. It'll take me a moment just to try to um, get the agenda. I believe it's been uploaded onto the town website. I it... um I got it through the uh our, the uh -huh. our website page. Yeah, and it it is on the t town website, but it was. It should have, they should have received it separately as well. Um, so Asa, do you have a copy there that you could provide to me? It might be easier for you to just run off a copy. Um, yes, I can email it to you. One sec. Actually, I, I, if rather than email, if you could just give me a printed copy, because I'll need to, that would be great. Uh, sure, one moment. All right, thank you. Strange thing, I'm getting all your emails. I know, and you in the past you were the person I, that that was right. that was not receiving the emails. So I don't know, I'm getting everything. <laughs> so I um I am gonna uh, I know that Guilford was here in the participants. So I'm gonna just. I see his name. Yeah, he's he's here. That's fine. Thanks. Here he is. Okay. And I think I just found the the, the uh, agenda. Uh, yeah. All right. So if 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 you'll you have your agenda, I'll read the the um the first part of it and then just turn over everything okay, to you. Great. All right. So um. Pursuant to Chapter 20 of the Acts of uh, 2021, this meeting will be conducted via remote means. Members of the public who wish to access the meeting may do so via Zoom or by telephone. See the instructions below. No in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time via technological means. Um, this meeting is being recorded. Um, and we'll just do a simple, I'll ask the co-chair to do a simple ro roll call so that members of the Disability Access and Advisory Committee can acknowledge their presence and we can check on the sound. Okay, so Marty Smith, uh, co-chair. All right. Saren? Yes. Uh, Elise? Here. Ian? Here. Jim? Here. I think that's... And then we have uh, Guilford Mooring and Asa Stanley Kemmler. Um, are there any announcements? 
no announcements. Uh, at this point, we have a general public comment period. Is there any public that would like to make a statement or? Pamela, I take that yeah. as a no. No, you do have one do? one member. Okay, good. All right, and I will allow um, bring them to panelists now. Okay. Mm -hmm. Hi, sorry. Um, Hi. I, I've been hosting conferences. That's why it says uh, research. Let me let me rename myself. <laughs> All right. Okay. Um, hi, good morning. So I had emailed Myra about this um, just to let the Disability Access Advisory Committee know. I don't know whether she forwarded that to you yet. I um, I was emailing about the streetlights policy, which is still being considered by the town. Um, the, the TAC did receive an updated version of the policy uh, from the sponsoring counselors, Councillor Man Mandy Haneke and Anna Devlin Gothier on Friday, Thursday. And I forwarded the information to Myra. One part of the proposal now is to include a task force that would look at in depth and then make some recommendations and develop a map about which parts of town should have more street lighting, which parts of town should have less street lighting. The proposed membership for the committee is to have seven voting members, one of whom would be from the Disability Access Advisory Committee. So I don't know whether anybody had reached out to you about that, but I thought I would let you know. Um, there's also a proposed to be a member from TAC and a member from the CONCOM and four members of the public, including people who have expertise you know, in different related areas, such as the health impact of lighting, um, transportation safety, and so on. So um, the, the sponsoring counselors and myself and Eve Vogel, um, all of whom have spent a lot of time thinking about the streetlights policy. I mean, we had proposed a task force as a way to look comprehensively at where the lighting should be more and where the lighting should be less. And that task force would be charged with doing outreach on that and outreach to various stakeholders and having neighborhood meetings and so on to get input from everybody because it is an issue that a lot of people care about. So I just wanted to provide that update. So, I mean, one option Thank too you. is that, um, you know, I don't know how just, how Disability Access Advisory Committee would feel about having a membership. Um, but I know that, you know, for some of the people who are interested, there's also going to be outreach to them, like for the senior center and so on, whether or not people are actually full members. Um, the committee, the task force is slated to be formed in 2024. And I think like wrap up its work like a year or two later. So there's a bit of a commitment. I assume that they'll be meeting monthly or so. So thanks. So when would we need to give the task force a name? Well, it's called the Street Lights Task Force. Okay. As proposed. No, but I meant I meant when would our the board need to submit a name for the for the Oh task force? um so I believe it would be in twenty twenty four. And okay, so we've got a little bit of time. Yeah, no, you definitely have a lot. Of, <laughs> okay, yeah, you ahead. definitely have time. It was more just like sort of a heads up and be like, okay, hey, thank you. <laughs> you've been slated for this, and just to let you know. And I mean, of course, it's very important to have like input from your committee as well as other stakeholders. Yeah. So thanks. Yes, well, thank you for telling us about it. That's very good. I won't ask if anyone wants to serve at this point. I think we need to. Um, think about who should be there and who wants to do it. Um, and by then we may have a different makeup of the committee also, so who knows. But 
Thank and you. Then all, and also it's just proposed right now, right? So mm -hmm. that the council would need to approve the idea of creating this task force. Okay. So, it's so I mean, if the um, Disability Access Advisory Committee has an opinion on that, like I would, you know, encourage you to put that forward. But I just seem like that's going to be the best way to go as opposed to the initial plan where the sponsoring counselors had come up with their own map without doing any of that outreach. So the outreach is important. I agree. <laughs> In this community, without having some outreach, just going ahead with a policy would be pretty dangerous. Um, thank you, Tracy. Um, I guess we're on to new business. Uh, and this is, where's Guilford? We're looking for a status on yeah. the uh, accessible Pedestrian signals. Mm -hmm. Hi, Gelford. You're on. So we had the inventory done. Um, the, the price is going to probably be very significant. So we actually have the our vendor who we use to buy equipment doing a price up for that. Um, but we also have a an up a proposed change in some of our controllers. So we're actually trying to work out the price with the new controllers as well. So, but the study is all done. Um, it's not that, it's not, I mean, everything costs a lot of money now, it seems, um, but it's not that bad of a, it's, it's not that bad. I mean, it's a lot of buttons couple of control boxes, which actually, if you do control boxes, you're doing controllers too. And they don't really talk about that in the study. So, but it's, it's all done and we're just kind of putting prices together and seeing where we are with finances. So Guilford, what, what are we looking at as the budget? Uh, we haven't finished putting the numbers together, but what's left over in the, from the original $30,000 you had is about 20,000, but we're well beyond that in pieces and parts. Are we three times that? Uh, we don't know yet. Uh -huh. They're still working on the price. Okay. I just I just am more curious because I like to know what these <laughs> kinds of prices are. It just helps me. Um, okay. Uh, what is the status of the North uh, common handicap parking at this point. So we had talked about doing that parking space after we finished the common renovations and then putting it over on the side with the um, bank. Bank? Yeah. Uh, that's um, what we had talked so, about doing. So how if someone's um, going to town hall, where do they park? When the project will be over, there'll be... No, I mean right now, during construction. During construction, you park in the back of the parking lot, in the back behind town hall, in the parking lot behind the behind at town the non-accessible accessible space. That's the space that's the closest space right now. Yeah, it's non-accessible. <laughs> Let's be truthful about it. <laughs> it doesn't meet code by any. Then you're parking in Spring Street, the next closest space. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, uh, uh, Marty, can I interrupt absolutely. on this subject? Because I had to go to sign for my approval for this committee. Uh, and then I was able to find a, part, a, a place at the back of the town hall, as Guilford suggested. Yeah, it's kind of challenging coming from that alleyway when the cars are going, coming toward you when you're trying to get to the accessible entrance of the tunnel. So I don't know what can be done. Maybe like some reminders, slow down for pedestrians or that kind of thing, whether it will have any impact or not. But it's okay. It's not impossible, but it is risky. Yeah, it's, it's non-compliant. Yeah. It's a non-compliant space yeah, right, right. because you have to have a path of travel and you don't have that. 
You can't, there's no path of travel from those part, from that parking space. A path, path of travel is not a driveway. It is a separate sidewalk or walkway that, or path. That doesn't exist. <laughs> yeah, I know. That's what I'm saying. Well, we, no, we, could do, we, could, we could do the UMass thing and just paint a walkway in the driveway. That may be the best thing to do. Although you're still in the driveway, which... I know. It's not a... We don't do that anymore, by the way. Oh, you still have them. Oh, no. there. That's that's the path of travel from the space. That is actually in the code. You, you, have, you have them across lots and across driveways and alleyways and mm -hmm. there's a few of them i mean we could do it i don't mind doing it yeah well the problem is the paving's so bad that it's gonna <laughs> it's gonna make the paving look worse um uh, we got to deal with that whole situation at some point and uh, how long do you expect this to last gilford uh we should wrap up construction by june next year oh wow well, yeah that's that's not safe. Yeah. And that's a place where we go for early voting too, right? <laughs> <laughs> the town hall, so. It yeah. is where you go for early voting. Yeah. And actually mm -hmm. you can't get from the Spring Street lot to the town hall either now. Yeah. You know, what would be a very good entrance to the town hall would be on that, uh, on the, uh, not the main street side, the other that opens to the spring street. There is, I think there are some steps you have to go. Like, I don't know what could be done, but that will be a safe entrance too, even after the construction is all done. Because the construction, even on the construction, I don't know where the handicapped places would be to have access to the town hall. And that will limit people going down that hill too. They'll be at the level, but then how do we get inside to the upper level? Whether, I don't know what is out there right now. Like, lifts well you, you can get in, if you got into the if you get if you had access to the back door town hall mm. you go in the back door town hall and you can get to the to the elevator yep. and then you can go up and down that's the employee entrance it's, oh. it's, it's a yeah. secure entrance it's a secure entrance yeah we've talked about that about using that as the accessible entrance and then you could put more accessible parking in the back, regrade that yep. lot a little bit and be able to actually um, have an accessible entrance. But there, uh, the quote unquote accessible entrance to town hall is not accessible. The um, grades are too great. Just even at that, at the door, you're right. over twice the, the grade it should be. It's, that yeah it's not accessible that's uh that's what you're talking about about is on the main street right if you're temporary parking 15 minute parking yeah that right is there. so steep you know so yeah. hilly and, well not uh, that not the top part but even down once you get into that little area in front of the door it's right, right. graded incorrectly that's right that's yeah. right but the, so uh, you take your life in your hands going down the sidewalk that's right. Yeah. There's just no way to get there. There's no way to change the sidewalk grade, really. Yeah, you can't. Right. You'd have to you'd have to change all of uh, so maybe, uh, Main Street. <laughs> maybe we should look into allowing people with disabilities to use the employee backdoor entrance if they if it is accessible by elevator once you get in. I've made maybe, that recommendation. Yeah, I think maybe that might be a solution. It, and it would be, is, but the town's got to decide to do it. Right, I know. But maybe we can request that, make, bring it up to the town to look into that. Putting all the 
disadvantages that people with disabilities are facing right now and the danger mm -hmm. of what is provided and also until next June, because that's where people can go to pay their taxes or if they have anything to do with the town clerk. So it's an important facility. And why should we say, ah, oh, well, we don't have an accessible site temporarily or forever. You know, that's not really acceptable. I think we should maybe really have the town consider this employee entrance for us to use. I don't know, there might be special permits. We might need to enter a special code or, you know. I, I think you are correct. Um. So maybe we should have open it for discussion from all and then maybe take a vote on what to do. Or maybe we can wait until Myra comes next week, next month. I think we should think about making a, a, a motion, a request to the town to uh, reevaluate the use of the employee entrance yes. for um, the public. And I don't know what it involves inside of the building. It, pro it might involve a little bit of construction to make sure that it's uh, separated so that it's a public way rather than going directly into offices i just don't i haven't been down there um it goes into it just goes into a big hallway oh it does well then why i well okay then that seems to be an administrative issue well the pro the, the issue back there is is that no one's back there it's uh -huh. very there's no offices back there. It's very storage and mail room, boiler room, um, staff lounges back there in IT. So there's not enough constant supervision that we had um, people who would come in and camp out in there at sure. times. And that was the reason the door was locked. You, you now come in one of three doors, which are kind of observed. Well, the, the one There's... that opens accessible entrance, it's not really observed by anyone either. And every time I enter, I just we just open the door and then push the button to go up or down, you know, usually up, because down is only the bathroom, I think, bathrooms, but I might be wrong. I never go that way. So there's really nobody watching who is entering the building or not. This is the one that opens to the main street. So I don't know. But I think it is really worth considering because if this temporary construction is going to last until June. So, I mean, I was able to take my chances and park behind and come through that narrow alley. And uh, but I was not alone and it was daytime. Sarah, this issue is is not going to change once this construction is completed. This issue right. has been a long-standing issue that's right. that has never been dealt with. And I think the town should look at an electronic solution to this. It could be either a um, it could either be cameras down there with someone and which someone could see movement. Or it could be um, a buzzer that goes to a central office that um, someone with a two-way communication um, to let people in. There, I mean, there's a there's a lot of creative solutions to the to the security issue. So, um, would you like to make a motion to request the town to? Um, Yes. Seriously study this and provide a resolution for entrance. Yes. Somebody I would like a... yeah. I would like to recommend the town to provide access through the 
door that's being used as employee entrance to provide access, safe access to people with disabilities trying to get into the town hall. Is there a second to that motion? I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? So Gilbert, you have a, <laughs> a study in your hands now. <laughs> what? You have something in your hands now to look into that and see. Oh, what no, it's not mine. That. No? <laughs> <laughs> it's not my building. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> Guilford's DPW. I don't think you get to. Oh, I see. <laughs> it'll, it'll go to Jeremiah. Yeah. Um. Just, just so you know, though, the back parking lot is by far the closest way. And the back door is, it's only 53 feet from the spaces in the back parking lot to the door and i even, agree i think that'd be good and even yeah, the, I... even the existing before we got rid of them the existing main street parking lot spaces um they were 200 feet away from the door yeah but you couldn't get into the building from those spaces well i'm just telling you what yeah the no i, was I just know measuring I distances think... Yeah, I know. I I I've always felt the back entrance was the best way to go. I had that conversation yeah. <laughs> before. Um. Okay. Uh, next business is a status of accessible traffic signal repair. I'm not sure how that differs from the first item. Yeah, Marty, you, had, you had a hand up a moment ago. Oh, we did. Oh, okay. Yes, uh, pardon me. I was just going to ask for sake of clarification. Um, for the construction on the North Pleasant Street entrance, is that just to replace the stairs or will that entrance be made accessible? Um, that's not my project either, but I'll answer. So the stair the work on the on the Boltwood side of town hall is just replacing the stairs. There will be no accessible access on that side. Oh, yes, Boltwood. All right, thank you. Okay, and so um, I think that items one and three are the same. Uh, they were um, phrased differently on the last agenda and in the email that I received from Myra, which is why they appear differently. Okay. But I think it's the same issue. Yeah, I do too. I, I would add one comment if I could. Sure. So the South Pleasant and Northampton Road intersection and actually the Northampton Road and University Drive intersection, which doesn't belong to the town. Um, mm -hmm. The Northampton Road project upgraded those and put all the pieces and parts that are recommended and required. So if you want to go check those out, those two are what have everything they're supposed to have, according to the state. And they'll be turned over to, well, our intersection will be turned back over to us shortly. And the Northampton our uh, university drive is still the UMass or still Mass Dot, and that'll stay with them. But they're supposedly the two intersections that have everything. Okay, thank you. Could I ask a couple of questions out of ignorance? Oh, sure. Okay. Not, the so bad pedestrian question. access issue. We're talking specifically about West Street One Sixteen and Pomeroy Lane, or someplace else. Um, for what the, the study we did, we didn't do Pomeroy Lane and 116 because the traffic light was taken out there. So yeah, that one yeah. wasn't done. But uh, the RFBs that we bought for the Pomeroy 116 intersection are the ones that are the current code, which will do all the things they're supposed to do for all the, the current requirements for ADA. Okay. Now, my, my follow-up question to that, and... I apologize because the group and, and Guilford may have already discussed this ad nauseum and it's already set and everything else. But uh, the rotary that now exists at Triangle in East Pleasant, which replaced a traffic light, is there uh, pedestrian access there at that rotary equipment for that? There are no, no RFBs there at that intersection at all. Okay. And so, I mean, the reason I ask that is that you've got the nutting apartments 
up East Pleasant a little ways. It used to be that folks there would often come down and, and go down East Pleasant and then hook up, hook, hook up with North Pleasant to get into town uh, by foot or wheels. And so I don't know whether that's still an issue or whether that's just something that, no, it, it's not something that needs to be addressed. And I'm not trying to put you on the spot, Guilford. I'm just raising it as an issue out of, as I said, ignorance. We don't, I don't know. No one has actually made any complaints about the Triangle East Pleasant in a okay. while. Okay. Okay. Are we... So the next uh, agenda item is Mass DOT Route 9 curb cuts. And I'm not exactly sure what this refers to, but I was looking at them the other day, and Myra bought, brought up a very interesting um, issue, which I never heard of. Um, and that is, and I'm Gil Guilford, I'm sure you don't recognize this, because it's not in any code that I've ever seen. But Myra was saying that the truncated dome uh, warning strips, that if you're blind, one of the things they do is they use the uh, void between the the domes as a guide with the cane to direct them in the direction across mm -hmm. to the right place across the street. Unfortunately, a lot of the new curb cuts that were put in and and they met code obviously um, have the truncated cone strips so that they go out not in a in the direction of the path of travel so i'm not sure what this actually um refers to but i assume that's what um myra meant had you ever heard that guilford um i didn't know that people use them to line themselves up uh, yeah i guess they do it's it's something and I've been involved in locating many of those. I've never heard this before. So, and it's not addressed by any standards. No, because it's actually the ones we they just put in are all correct. Yeah, they, I mean, they all meet code. It's just that you're going to end up in the middle of Route 9 if you follow. So. Yep. I mean, the, the, the item on the agenda, I think, was put in when there was no accessibility through the oh, construction site right. yeah that's what the item was about um mm -hmm. but it like but now it's all done so all the accessibility is back in place yeah i drove by the other day and it looks pretty good i think they'll, they'll be striping probably this week next week and then hopefully they'll turn it over to mass dot at that point okay Um, the next sort of business is the Munson Library Accessibility Improvements. Right. So, um, I did reach out to, uh, Chris Bresniff and, um, to, I'm going to forget his name, um, Rob Wachella, uh, cause they came before the DAC to request, um, support for, uh, the MOD grant to make the improvements in the Mun in Munson um, Library. Uh, that grant has been submitted, but they have not received a word of an award yet. So um, Rob wasn't able to join us today, but they don't have any information to provide um, for an update. So okay. they're waiting to hear. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, I guess I was by the new North Library edition the other day, and mm -hmm. that is looking very good. There's plenty of accessible parking right at the new entrance, and uh, that's going to be a very nice addition to the town. Guilford, that site's looking good. What... Yes. um. Where is where is the 
roundabout going? Is it going behind the parking, north of the parking? Oh, we haven't decided that yet. Oh, really? No. Okay. I thought that was pretty well designed. For North Amherst? No. Oh, really? Okay. I For some reason, I was under the impression that was starting soon. No. Okay. That's too bad. <laughs> so, okay. Um, old business. We have a uh, collaboration with the Northampton Disability Committee. Is there any uh, information on that? Um, I don't have any update uh, on that. I, I uh, have let that slip, um, but I will uh, put it on my agenda for this week um, and keep you posted. Thank you. Appreciate that. Um, is there any other business? Well, I have uh, something I'd like to bring up. Sure. And um, this a uh, couple of days ago, I read in the paper of the plans that are made for the old golf course. I forgot what it is called. Uh, off sure. of huh? Hickory Ridge. Oh, Hickory Ridge, that's right. And that one of the things that were being discussed were trails and accessible trails. So as usually happens, they are halfway done with the work until they come and get our ideas and approval, review of the plans. Is there, if it is still in the planning stage, is there any way we could get more involved from the beginning of it. So that's what I thought to all of your attention. Hmm. That's interesting. Where's Guilford? What's the status at Hickory Ridge? It's a planning department project. I don't know. I only know of one little piece of trail they're working on, which comes on the sewer property owned by the sewer department and that's the only thing i know about it hmm. who's building it do you know they haven't contracted it out yet and oh okay i think, I think the plans so is are still in the just process. the planning stage i think okay well then theoretically they should bring it before us hmm. yeah that makes Pamela, sense. you want to follow up with planning on that, please? That would be very nice. Sure, I can um, reach out to the planning yeah. department. And Elise has her hand uh, raised. Oh, I'm sorry, Elise. Yeah, um, speaking of accessible trails, which I keep seeing emails about and hearing word about, there's a really important thing that I don't understand. Um, how does one with a disability get access to these trails if one doesn't drive. And a lot of people with disabilities don't drive. That's a question I'm going to keep asking because I would love to use those trails. It's not accessible if you can't get to them. Yeah. So anyway, I just thought I'd put that out there. That's no, that's a very valid that's yeah. part of accessibility to me. It's not accessible. You can't call it an accessible trail if it's not accessible to people. Yeah, if you can't get there. Yeah, that that to me is not accessible. That's that's baloney. So anyway, I thought I'd put out that out there. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> that's a very valid issue. How does PVTA paratransit handle? that or do they just ignore any requests or how does that work or not i don't know they yeah. would schedule it in my uh experience using the pvt events if you schedule a day before they can drop you any place and so at that um place we're talking about um and they have lots of parking lots of parking spaces there but they were also thinking of shrinking the size of the parking 
there too. So maybe we should bring it up. If that is going to be a trail, they should provide enough parking for drop off for PVT events. So at least that is easily doable, actually. If I can. can. Yeah. Right. If you can schedule. Yeah, I mean, you think you can't be spontaneous. You know, you have to like really think about planning. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And you, it, you don't really have that much control over when you go. Yeah, yeah. You know, to me, is yeah, it's doable, but to me, it's not satisfactory. And yeah. and the pickups would be really problematic, I would think, because they're problematic yeah. already, and you don't want to be stuck. Exactly. At Hickory Ridge or some other place for, you know, at oh. six o'clock at night. So yeah. pickups are hard because they don't predict, you know, they're unpredictable. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. I was just going to say that uh, this is all important information that the um, the testimony uh, that Comerford and, and um, I can't remember who the representative is attached to it. Uh, but the testimony is happening tomorrow in the email that uh, Pamela sent out. I saw uh, that. I wish at, I would yeah. that. At uh, yeah. uh, 1 p.m. And, and I think there's virtual access to it, too. I can't go. Yeah, I'd love to. Yeah. So um, I would just say that I neglected to send that out um, earlier just because of the many things that are tugging at my uh, yeah. sleeves. But you can... Um, provide written comments so there mm -hmm. is in the in, in the email information oh. to provide written comments so that's okay. available to you thanks okay well. um pardon me but um elise what sort of uh solutions were you thinking of for the accessibility issue um at hickory ridge like are you thinking of like sidewalk extensions no um I don't drive. I have a, I'm legally blind and use a guide dog and a cane. And so getting to any accessible trail, wherever it is, is not doable on foot unless it's very close to town. Yeah. So, you know, and it's not just me. I'm sure there are other people who, you know, probably. I don't know. I don't I have a solution. I really don't. I'm just thinking, wow, you know, it, it's not <laughs> it's not easy. You can't really get to them and use them, you know, unless you can find a buddy to go with. And that's not always easy. All right. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> well, there's another thing that comes to my mind, Elise. Yeah. Um, Amherst Neighbors. I don't know whether you're a member or not. I they, am. Yeah, yeah, I could put that out there. They have lots of volunteer services, and they have lots of people interested in walking as well. So okay. maybe you could get into their circle, because I get tons of emails, walking group meeting at this time, and they're trying to start a group. So but maybe we should... I'm yeah. sorry to interrupt, but I've seen those emails and they meet at Maplewood Farm. How the hell do you get to Maplewood Farm? Right, I know, but they have lots Ugh. of volunteers who could maybe one of the people that participate in those, you know, you should just like get, get like a group of you. I'm sure they'll be happy to assist because at least you are very able uh, body you know you don't need a special transportation you can just jump in anyone's car and go with them if so i if they take my dog yeah 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 you're right yeah, i mean I, I think there are probably you know individual solutions for certain folks but yes. i think elise has really identified an important uh problem because amist yeah. invests a lot of money in its exactly. trail system and how are people with disabilities, and we're talking about a broad range of disabilities here, how are they exactly. going to enjoy them? Not just me, you know, yeah. and it has to be somebody who's willing to take a, a service dog, you know, not everybody wants to do that. But yeah, I like the suggestions about Amherst Neighbors and paratransit. Those are, those are good, you know, but it is tr it's true. It's not just me, I'm thinking. <laughs> well, one challenge, I think, with 
um, what Jim just said about, you know, how would people get to the trails? And that's what you brought up, Elise, is yeah. we cannot expect the town to have these trails downtown walking distance to uh, people where maybe more people will be able to use the trails because of the logistics. Land is so expensive and you might not find these uh, nature walks, you hmm. know, downtown. So it's practically like it's not feasible in my opinion. So yeah. we have to be, I mean, yeah. I'm okay with it spreading outside into outskirts that's where nature is, where you can walk and hear the birds and things like that, you know, that kind of a thing. And uh, so we have to be, I mean, in my opinion, uh, getting uh, easy accommodations, PVT, I think, is very uh, good and friendly. And they would provide, I mean, whether, whenever I use, you have to be flexible. You have to be planned. Eh, that's fine. But, oh. you know, that's life. So I got I know that. that. I'm aware of that. I spent yeah. my whole life being flexible and waiting for yeah. buses, depending yeah. on, you're preaching to the choir. I'm just right. right. I understand. Yeah. And, and I think, yeah. too, if, if the town is saying, yeah, we're going to have an accessible trail at Hickory Ridge, then while it's not incumbent on the town to provide transportation there to anybody who needs it, I think it is incumbent to cooperate with PBTA and, and or find mm -hmm. other resources yes. to make it truly accessible. I mean, you know, it's otherwise it's a bridge to nowhere, you know, <laughs> right. you can't use yeah. it. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, I just yeah. thought I'd put it out. Yeah, I was just going to add that. Um, I mean, uh, my understanding is is that this is statewide legislation, so it's not just Amherst. So this would be an issue facing um, municipalities all over. Um, so and and I think it's very important that we do raise this. Um, and uh given that at least it sounds like you're you're busy tomorrow um I'd, I'd be happy to to write something up on behalf of the committee to submit um in writing mm -hmm. as written testimony oh this that's wonderful yeah i'm running to three different places back to back that's the problem if i'm not gonna be home all day and evening it's tomorrow otherwise what I'd... time is it it's at um, 1 p.m what yeah 1 p.m tomorrow I just might be able to make it home by that time. Yeah. <laughs> just, I, so I, I guess maybe, I, I don't know if this would need a motion or not, but um, if, if I did write the thing between now and, and tomorrow uh, to have the committee's um, signature on it rather than just have it come from an individual. I think a motion would be good because it makes it official from the DAAC. All right. I, I, yes. I guess I'll, should, should I make that motion or, or, or does someone else need to make it? You can make yeah. it. All right. I'll, I'll make the motion that I will write a letter uh, on our behalf to, uh, or written, not no letter. Uh, I'm making a motion on behalf of, to, to provide written testimony on behalf of the committee to, uh, in, in, um, support of this legislation, but raising the concern that uh, getting to these public trails is a major accessibility issue in itself. That sounds good. I second that. I third it. <laughs> <laughs> All in favor? Great. I love that. Yeah. Aye. Aye. Any, any abstentions? Any nays? Then the motion Thank you for passes. doing that. Yes, thank you for doing yeah. this, Ian. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, I'll shut up now. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to. You're enjoyable. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> it's just been a bee in my bonnet this whole. <laughs> well, I don't blame April. you. I see you yeah. standing outside. I stopped the other other day. I was gonna. I turned around and thought, "Oh, I'll go pick <laughs> Elise up," and you you'd already gotten on the bus by the time I got turned around. <laughs> Oh, I spent half my life. <laughs> Not that I don't appreciate the public transportation, but man, oh man, you know. Yeah, and then bad weather is awful. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, um, 
I guess the next um, item is to approve the meeting minutes. So the first we'll do is approve the meeting minutes for August 2023. Are there any changes, corrections, comments? Um, hi, uh, just uh, for comments. Um, does anyone have any like questions, comments about the um, minutes for August 10th? Um, it was, I did the minutes for that meeting and this is my first time doing official minutes. So I just wanted to see if anyone had any comments. I briefly looked at them and they look good. They look good um, to me. All right, thank you. Good job. Yeah. Good job. Um, <laughs> someone want to make a motion to accept? Or I'll make a motion to accept the August minutes as written. Second. Okay. All in favor? All right. Aye. 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 Thank you. Yes. Um, all opposed? Then the ayes have it. <laughs> Okay. And so I did not get an opportunity to finish the September minute. So you'll get September and October together. Okay. So, yeah. Great. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. May I ask a follow up to the August minutes, however, um, because we talked then about changing this group into a, a commission or whatever it is. Sorry. Yeah. A or whatever. I just wondered what the status of that was. So, uh, yeah, so um, at the last meeting, I believe that Myra had suggested that that uh, that work on that effort be postponed until after the election, until the new town council is in place. So um, that's that where sense. where you are. OK. Which Thank will you. be when, Pamela? It'll so the, in, go on. Oh, go ahead, Marty. <laughs> I was going to say it'll be in December at least. The election's in November. Oh, yeah. Okay. Right. I think I believe that her, I mean, I'm, certainly that uh, next month when you speak with, when she's returned, you can at, um, have more conversation. But I believe that the conversation that she had with the liaison from the town council um, was that with the election going forward and all of the town councilors being up for re-election um, and the rest of their docket, that it was probably wiser to wait until after the election of the new town council rather than to proceed with um, trying to get a decision made at, um, prior to the uh, election. So I believe that was the rationale for waiting. And that makes sense. Mm -hmm. um, and so then the council gets sworn in and December or something, or how does that work? Anybody know? Maybe January. I'm yeah, not I, sure when the swearing in. Yeah, I think that you won't have a new council until January. Okay. Um, so. so is there any way we can put it in next month's agenda and uh, maybe to discuss whether it makes sense to pursue it uh, sooner than after the council new council is sworn in and it will be maybe January or February, you know, that's how we lose lots of time. Mm -hmm. So this has been in discussion since I know Joe Tringali was a member of this uh, committee. And he, that was one of the things he really pushed for it. And then we had, what well, who was, what was the name of the state um, person? Oh, Jeff Dugan. Jeff yes, Dugan Jeff came Dugan in came and discussed about the pros and cons of those. And there were actually no cons. You know, they were all in favor. All the things we discussed was in pros. So maybe we should just try to see some action started rather than delay it. So, so maybe we, yeah. So I will, um, I am happy to, to add it to the November 
agenda and okay. I just want to um, so I think discussion about adding it to the November agenda is uh, appropriate. However, because it was not listed um, on the agenda for today's meeting, we should limit the discussion to mm -hmm. simply whether it's on the right. agenda or not. Right. Yeah. Right. Any other new business? I have a question for the group, and that is, has, has this group ever discussed um, a, visit, a visitability ordinance for the town of Amherst? This would involve new construction of homes so that all new homes would be minimally accessible to persons with mobility impairments. And some towns and cities have adopted this. Interesting. Yeah. I don't recall that being discussed, Jim. I mean, we looked at uh, some new constructions, but not as a building uh, code at all. But that yeah, makes I can get materials to people if if they're interested for discussion at some later date, or we could put it on the agenda for next month and then and then go from there. I'm not exactly sure what the official approach should be, but in any event, I'm I'm happy to share information about it. And it 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 does help folks, you know, so that they can get in front doors and things like that. So is that for private construction? Yes. Really? Yes. What communities yeah. are doing that? I'd have to I'd have to check. I apologize. I'd be really that. interested in knowing what communities have done it. Yeah. Okay. Because yep, really. that seems like a a little overreach of uh private property laws. Um well, but at the same time, we all when all of us who own private homes, any changes we make, we have to abide by local and state building codes. So that really isn't in itself, it's not an issue. Um, it's a, just a question of whether a, a town wants to put teeth into uh, this particular approach. What about apartment buildings? Do they have that? Or is there a code for that? There is code for that. So, okay. yeah. um, right. I mean, I cannot see it with really private single family homes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, so, there's code once you get to four units on a property, but anything under four units is not controlled. Uh, and that goes back to the private property issues. All right. And so, again, I'm just yeah. going to suggest that we um, either place it on the agenda, uh, right. but we need to limit discussion because yeah. it's not listed on as an agenda item on, okay. for today's meeting. That's fine. That's fine. That's good. It would be interested, interesting, Jim, if you could uh, give us a little bit more information so we can okay. can talk so about it. How, I would. How should I approach that? Should I? Uh, who should I send that information to before the next meeting, or do I wait send until the Pamela. discussion of the next mm -hmm. meeting? So send it to yeah. Pamela, mm -hmm. and then she'll disseminate it. Right. Okay. Yeah. Right. the The official way for the for the committee to communicate. Oh, when we're not in session is through Pamela and then she disseminates it to everybody. Okay. And that, that gets us in compliance with the uh, open meeting laws. Yeah. I don't want to get you all into trouble. But... No, we don't want to get into trouble. No. <laughs> we're following all the laws. Let's do that. So, um, Anything else before we adjourn? Okay, so I, so I'm just gonna say that for um, for the next agenda under um, old business, we'll have the collaboration with Northampton Disability Commission, and then for new business, the two items will be um, discussion of the mobility ordinance, and. Um, I guess also under old business would be uh, moving from committee to um, commission as well. Mm -hmm. So those are the three items I have. Right. Oh, and an update from Ian about the the meeting tomorrow. Mm -hmm. That would be very good. Okay. Yep. If I just 
put that in for you, Ian. Sorry for making you work. <laughs> no worries. I'm I'm not sure if I'll be able to attend the me meeting itself, but I will submit the written testimony. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. That was a really to... good discussion. I appreciate that. That's good. Yeah. Can I can I just say, Pamela, you rock. <laughs> I just want to say yes. you're amazing. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. <laughs> um, anyone want to make a motion to adjourn? I'm I shall so move. Okay. <laughs> second. I'll second that. Thank you, Ian. <laughs> Everyone you. have a great month. You too. Well, good job you. filling Bye. in Take that chair. Take care. <laughs> okay. Bye-bye. Right. Bye. 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 Okay. Bye.